Good afternoon, everybody. It's Saturday, just before the 4th of July. I think it's the 1st of July. Got my warm, famous, world-famous green, lima green coffee cup here. Cheapest coffee I can buy. $2.29 in a can. I've got used to that taste, but I like my French vanilla cream. Uh, Low-fat. French vanilla cream in my coffee. I learned how to read at the age of 30 years old in a King James Bible 1611. And uh, word by word, little by little, the Holy Spirit helped me learn how to read. I couldn't read a seventh grade reader at 30 years old. <clears throat> they gave me a diploma at 19 because I had good attendance in school, spent two years of second grade because of dyslexia, and they gave me a diploma to get rid of me. I still couldn't spell or read uh, in English. I was failing English. Okay, you must pass English to get a high school diploma. So I'm 30 years old, can't read, the Lord calls me. He says, I'm going to make a teacher. Adi. I said, T for time out, Lord, basketball. <laughs> He says, I can't read, and you're going to make a teacher out of me? He says, we'll take care of that. You just stay faithful. I'll give you a hunger for my word, and eventually you'll be able to read well enough to teach lawyers and doctors, and I have taught lawyers and doctors. So I started out in the King James Bible. I'm going to show you four books. If God gives you the desire to read daily and begin to study, you're going to need these four books. I learned how to read in this one. It's my favorite one. I read the best in King James, but I learned that King James is not the best translation. So the next book you need to find, and they're vanishing, Revised Standard, 1952, the older one. New Revised, they compromised for sales, and they put some of the King James mistranslated from Greek to English back in their New Revised Standard Bibles, especially Ephesians 1.5, where the word adoption is. You need to buy white out and white out adoption all five times in the New Testament. And the three books that it's in, the Greek word there is two Greek words, a placing a son. It has to do with growing up and maturity. A placing a son mature and responsible. Doesn't want children in blind faith. Faith in, faith in what? Faith in Christ anointing, the Christ anointed church. That's what I teach and preach. Christ in Christ. Unity, one spirit. The greatest revelation you can get is one spirit. Now I went from Strong's to Young's. Young's is faster and easier if you're going to go from reading daily to start to study and dig for truth. You need a concordance, all right, a Bible concordance. If you use Strong's, fine. Like I said, I was Strong's for 30 years, oh, 15 years, and now 15 years plus I use the Young's concordance. It's right there. You don't need the number system to go to the back. Greek and Hebrew gives you the meaning of the word. No number system. It's all right there. You're not flipping to the back of the book. So it's quicker. And nowadays, a lot of people are using computers. Now, here's what we're going with our teaching today. This is a valuable book. Who's who? Who's who in the Bible? And it's Old Testament first and New Testament Second, part two is better with better promises. We're under grace, part two, the second. And where we're going today is a young man that taught a 100 miles east. Actually, he went down the Lycus River Valley to Ephesus, sat under Paul as a student for two years or more in the Lycus River Valley or from the Lycus River Valley to Ephesus, when Paul taught in Ephesus in a school that was hard connected to the synagogue. 
Paul went into the synagogue, preached the kingdom of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Those who believed followed Paul out of the synagogue into the building, hard connected to the synagogue where Paul taught for two years, weekly, daily, whatever. So it is said by Bible theologians, most likely, uh, I think it's the name of the man, and we look it up in alphabetical order in who's who, is Epaphras, E-P-A-P-H-R-A-S, Epaphras. Now, every name, every city, every location, every person, do you know who Aquila and Priscilla was? It's a husband and wife team. What's so important about Aquila and Priscilla? They were underneath Paul's guidance and teaching for over two years. Uh, Aquila and Paul both had the same profession, tent makers. Priscilla could have been the teacher while her husband worked, and she, she served and serviced her husband as a good wife, being submissive, but doing as unto the Lord service she did as unto her husband in faithfulness. Okay, now, that husband and wife team took Apollos aside, a Jew from North Africa, uh, what is it? Uh, Apollos was from Alexandria in North Africa, the second largest library on the Mediterranean Sea. Also in Alexandria is where the uh, Septuagint was translated. The Greek Bible was translated in Africa and North Africa in Egypt in Alexandria, where Assyrians, where he, uh, Arabs, where Jews, where Egyptians, there was a giant library there, and they translated from all those language, languages into Greek. So the Greek Orthodox Church got their Septuagint Bible, Greek trans, into Greek translated Bible, out of North Africa, Alexandria, every city. Do you know that Alexandria was sieged by the same Roman army that destroyed the temple in 70 AD? Same general, same uh, army of the Roman army, legions, that destroyed Jerusalem, sieged, surrounded Alexandria, and conquered it. So, you know, you get into history, maps, people, places. Why? The Christ-anointed church headquarters in capital was Ephesus by 50 AD and put out apostle teachers, prophet teachers, evangelist teachers, shepherd elder teacher feeders for the next 300 plus years out of headquarters in Ephesus, west coast of Turkey, Asia Minor, where Paul taught, where Epaphras studied under Paul, went back up the Lycus River to the Lycus River Valley, and what was there? Three cities, Colossae, Laodicea, Heropolis. Heropolis is still inhabited today with hot springs. All the other religions come there to ho soak in the hot springs for healing. But the ruins of Colossae and Laodicea are barely recognizable in the valley, especially Colossae. It didn't last as long as the other two cities. You learn all this stuff over 44 years of praying, reading, and studying. And I'm just passing them on. I come from the Tri-Cities in Michigan, Midland, Bay City, and Saginaw. Born in Saginaw, raised in Midland, ran over to Bay City to the lake all the time. All right? I'm from the Tri-Cities of Michigan. There's the Tri-Cities in the Bible here. Colossae, Laodicea, and Heropolis. Now, Laodicea and the Ephesian letter, what they have in common, it's the one and the same circulation letter, the foundation letter. So when you read Ephesians, you're reading the Laodicean letter, six chapters. Colossae got a personal letter at the end of Colossae. It says, study Colossae and Laodicea together. And Paul also gave... Uh, Epiphanes, a kudo, uh, first paid tribute to him 
as an evangelist and faithful steward of the gospel message and the gospel message not only love, peace, mercy, and joy, the gospel message is mystery, Christ anointing gospel. Paul says, I come to see your power and anointing in the Holy Spirit when you teach. And that's part of the gospel, the mystery, the gospel. Everything's connected in God. It's 10 minutes and 30 seconds. I tried to give you an overview of why this by or this book is important. You should have one if you begin to study. Who's who? Is that upside down? <laughs> I can't tell. Who's who in the Bible? It goes one of these two ways. <laughs> also, you need to find a 1952 or older revised standard version, RSV, not new revised. And you also need a good concordance, whether on your computer or in your hand, Strong's or Young's. I prefer Young's. And you'll have your favorite Bible open that you enjoy reading. But a study Bible and a reading Bible are two different things. You need both of them open together. And this is a very good, accurate translation there's five of ten. This one's in the top five, maybe in the top three. So that was the teaching today. Four books of scripture that you need when you advance beyond loving Jesus as Savior, beginning to call Jesus Lord Jesus of your life. Call him Lord. You believe that Jesus is Lord, that El Father raised him from the dead. You're saved. And then you go beyond daily reading to studying, rightly dividing or accurately handling the word of truth. And you'll need those four books, minimum study library, those four books. Love you. Eugene Bear on YouTube. Thank you, YouTube, for putting my teachings out there. You, I give you verbal permission to use any of my teachings at any time in any way. Even, even half truth that I teach is good truth. <laughs> Love you. Be bear saying bye.